Hello everybody and welcome back to Red Eagle Politics. Make sure you guys like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. So, the 2024 election, as we know, we're under 11 months away. We're knocking on the door of election season. I think we're already in election season. And it's apparent at this point that it's going to be a Trump versus Biden redux. And the map you see on the screen right now is basically the map with all the states that are basically guaranteed to go one way or another. The other states are the states that could be up for grabs, but given the fact that Donald Trump has a sizable lead in both the popular vote and the electoral college, it's very possible that the map could be a little bit expanded. But still, these things change, and you just need 270 electoral votes to win a presidential election. You don't need to go out there and go scorched earth and win every single state you possibly can. Maybe you do if you have a good night, you have a landslide. I know that landslides are a little bit harder to come by nowadays because of how polarized the country is, and that goes for either side. But nevertheless, it's going to be an election that will come down to a few states, more likely than not. If Donald Trump wins the popular vote, a lot of that will come from gains in a place like New York, Florida, Texas, California, etc. You name it. Maybe the map expands, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But there's only really one state that this is going to come down to, and I'll tell you what it is if you've seen the title. Maybe you know if it's in the thumbnail, um, but regardless... This is going to come down to largely one state. Trump might win by a wider margin, but there's one state that is crucial that he cannot afford to lose, and we will show you guys after I tell you guys about RedEaglePolitics.com, your one-stop shop for all exclusive Red Eagle Politics content. For just $5 a month, that is a coffee a month that is 16 cents a day. You get access to all of my exclusive videos I post a few a month on here that you will not get to see on the main channel. They are full length. I put full effort into them. You guys can watch them. You guys also get access to the Discord server, talk with like-minded individuals, and also you get access to all of my posts in the newsletter. So you guys can sign up today at RedEaglePolitics.com. The link is in the description and the pinned comment down below. So here's the map here. North Carolina, Trump probably wins it, and that would put him right where he was in 2020. He gains a few electoral votes just because of the new map, and it's very likely that given the way things are going in terms of trends, Trump probably takes Wisconsin if he's doing this well. He takes Nevada if he's doing this well. Democrats in the state of Georgia, they are withholding funding. Maybe they put it back in later on. I'm not saying they can't, but Georgia Democrats are kind of in trouble. And Biden's struggling with black voters. Does not mean they're voting for Trump, but Biden is struggling to energize turnout in the new election legislation that Kemp pushed through, you know, to his own credit. It's not every day that he does something that's solid, but um, you saw what happened in the midterms. Every candidate not named Herschel Walker, whether they were Trump aligned or more establishment aligned, they ended up winning by a decent margin. So you look at this 267 to 226. So technically you could say Arizona. And I'm not saying Trump can't win Arizona. I'm not saying Trump can't win Michigan, but I think it's more likely than not that Pennsylvania is the state this comes down to. Because maybe you do lose Georgia. Maybe you do lose Nevada. Uh, well, te I guess you'd give Republicans Nevada more likely than not, but still, you could win with just Nevada, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, or maybe you get Georgia, but you don't get Nevada, and even then, you don't even need Wisconsin at that point. You can win with Georgia, Pennsylvania, and the entire rest of the map can be the 2020 map, but I do think Wisconsin likely flips if Pennsylvania does. I think Nevada does as well if Trump is doing well across the board with white working class voters, but still, the crucial state, the state that needs a lot of focus and attention compared to any of these other states, it's Pennsylvania. We could talk about Trump having this awesome epic landslide. He could go out there, run the table. He could pick off states like Minnesota, New Hampshire, but one state at a time. You know, if we're, if we're like in the eve of the election, it's mid to late October and Trump is just destroying Biden. He's doing well in the early vote in Pennsylvania, 
Biden knows his campaign is in utter shambles. Everybody's bracing for impact of the Trump presidency. And we kind of don't let the noise affect us down the stretch. And we actually end up winning. And it's apparent that we do. Yeah, maybe you could go after a state like Minnesota, New Hampshire. I know Trump's even talking about New York and New Jersey. That might be a little bit far-fetched, but I think he could improve there. So... Either way, one thing at a time, can't take it for granted, but Pennsylvania, that is the one state. This used to be called the white whale, the white whale for Republicans. They would try every year, but they didn't have that appeal demographics-wise to the blue-collar white voters of the state. Maybe they did a little bit better, but they couldn't do enough to offset Philadelphia. They couldn't do well enough to offset Pittsburgh. But Donald Trump, he's kind of cracking the code here. And you talk about the fact Biden's struggling with black turnout potentially. Well, in terms of Philadelphia, you see lower turnout there, but you still see the high turnout from white blue collar voters that we did not see in 2022. Uh, that would definitely help out Donald Trump. You talk about counteracting the Philadelphia suburbs. That's important. You could look at the swing map in 2022 in Pennsylvania because everybody wants to say that it's proof that Trump is done. But it's not like Trump voters are turning out in mass for John Fetterman. They're not. I mean, you look at the turnout differential here. You look at where the shifts are. They're not just in the suburbs. The suburbs are revolted by the Trump candidates or whatever. Um, which, by the way, Dr. Oz was not really a Trump candidate other than the fact he was endorsed by Donald Trump. And Mastriano was basically running a campaign in the dark, and he got outspent like 50 to 1. He got obliterated that definitely impacted down ballot. Pennsylvania Republican Party, not in the best shape, but now it does seem like the Pennsylvania Democrats have run into some problems. And even though they did the automatic voter registration, it's kind of backfiring a little bit. You see that there. You see it backfiring. And you see Republicans starting to outregister Democrats there more. So you're looking at Pennsylvania. The county map is where it comes down to. In 2020, Biden had an advantage because he was seeing, he called himself Scranton Joe. Well, now Scranton doesn't like Joe. And Joe's going to be on the ballot in 2024. He was not in 2022. Donald Trump will be on the ballot in 2024. Donald Trump was not on the ballot in 2022. So you're looking at the state of Pennsylvania. You see Donald Trump neutralizing certain issues that hurt Republicans there in the midterms, like abortion, possibly entitlements. You see him being that candidate that has that appeal across the rural part of the state, but also in terms of these you know, suburban Pittsburgh exists too, and you have a lot of blue collar voters in the suburbs there, and they've been moving right. So you're going to have to do better with them, and you're going to have to turn them out in high numbers and higher numbers than whatever Democrats are doing. And if you're using the election system to your advantage the way that Pennsylvania Republicans have been more inclined to do than before, he should be in a decent shape. But also, his Achilles heel in 2020 was not performing as good as possible in northeastern Pennsylvania. There's still a large blue-collar white voter base there. Maybe some went for Scranton Joe because they fell for the facade. That facade is pretty much over at this point. And right now, Donald Trump needs to, you know, make it a point to go up there to campaign to make sure that he can get that message across. And if he's able to do that, he's probably going to see his margins increase in these parts. And Philadelphia, even Biden potentially struggling there is not really a good thing overall for his chances at winning the state. And we see that. So this is the one state that comes down, it comes down to this one state, the whole entire election. And Republicans need to understand that. It's not just, oh, we're going to spend all our money in North Carolina, Ohio, Florida. This is not 2008. It's not 2012. This is 2024. We can, I'm not saying fully disregard every state, but Ohio and Iowa, they need to be on the back burner. Because if you're not winning Ohio, you have zero chance at winning the presidential election. It's pretty much a safe red state now. Yeah, contact people down there. Make sure they're helping people get out and vote. Maybe Trump holds a, a rally on the Ohio-Pennsylvania border. But either way, Ohio doesn't need to be a state that you focus a lot of attention on. Pennsylvania, it, it absolutely matters. Wisconsin matters. Nevada matters. Arizona does as well. I'm not trying to say it doesn't. 
I mean, it's good to have as much security as possible, but Georgia as well, you talk about it being like a five-state strategy, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Nevada, Arizona, Michigan, it's in there. I mean, North Carolina, maybe don't ignore it completely, but the GOP there is very competent. Same thing with Florida. So a lot of energy in Florida back in 2020 that probably did not need to be spent in Florida. If that was spent in Georgia, well, you would have overcame everything and and took the state uh, back then. So that's what it comes down to. You talk about the map, you have to focus on the areas necessary and the areas within the states that are necessary for turning out voters for victory. So if Donald Trump is able to do that, I think he'll be in very good shape. And I really think that his campaign, he's had two election cycles already to learn from, to understand where the voters are that that, uh, matter, get them out to vote and go from there. So you're looking at this. Yeah, Pennsylvania, that's the number one state of focus. I'm not saying the others don't matter, but I'm saying that's the tipping point state And there's so much subject matter to attack Biden on in the state that was not really all there back in 2020. So now it's time. We got 11 months. Let's get this done. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Like this video down below. Comment down below. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. The links are all in the description down below. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Red Eagle. Out.